Well, that was really a wonderful talk by uh, Dr. Ashish Dengra. Thank you very much for making our job very easy. But I would like to say that uh, every time uh, Rohit Sharma and KL Rahul do not play and you, you have to be dependent on Virat Kohli. So uh, metformin doesn't work in uh, each and every patient. So sometimes you have to think beyond, though it is first line drug and I'm not denying it, that it is first line drug. But uh, it, it doesn't work for every patient. But, and and here I'm giving me the Virat Kohli tag. Yeah, and here I'm going to talk after metformin. So this is uh, a thank you for not making it debate. Though you uh, in your last slide you you wanted to make it a debate, but uh, but I'll, I'll try to put the simple points which uh, will make us agree that uh, uh, definitely SGLT2 is a better choice in many ways uh, after metformin. So if we, uh, use, uh, as a whole, if we see diabetes, it's a metabolic cardiovascular and, and uh, the complication which occurs of uh, kidney disease where diabetes is, uh, uh, has ASCVD is the leading cause of uh, morbidity and mortality in person with diabetes and the largest contributor, the direct and indirect cause of diabetes. Where heart disease, we know, it, it uh, goes hand, hand in hand, where patients with type 2 diabetes have more than twice the risk of developing heart failure and uh, worse CV outcome, hospitalization and prognosis than patients without diabetes. And, and if we see the kidney disease, our most of diabetic patients die of kidney disease as actually the heart disease uh, in background. So uh, these three uh, problems uh, are always very important to discuss about and what the guidelines, how the guidelines have evolved and why they have evolved. The changes in the treatment of type 2 diabetes over the last two decades, if you see, uh, up to 2008, uh, it was all about glycemic control, hypoglycemia, weight gain, and, and, and increased cardiovascular risk factor. But after 2015, there was sudden change in guidelines and the guidelines started to talk about improvement in cardiovascular outcome and improvement in renal uh, outcomes along with glycemic control. But in 2020, we, we come up with the, uh, the newer ideas that disease or the uh, diabetes modifying drugs that can help to reverse the diabetes as well as they, they can improve cardiovascular outcome and renal outcome in diabetic patients. So uh, uh, this is again the same slide, ADA and ESD in 2018-19, they have changed the scenario. This guidelines uh, has been changed just because we have the drugs like SGLT2 inhibitors and uh, and uh, DPP-4 inhibitors or GLP-1 receptor agonists. So the treating our patient, why, why this guideline has come up uh, with this idea? Because uh, our more than 50% of patients have microvascular diseases uh, 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 through their 10 years of type 2 diabetes. 33% patients have uh, increased risk for hospitalization due to heart failure. 72% of the patient has uh, risk of ischemic stroke and 54% of the patients have a uh, risk of MI. So the selection of second line drug is determined by cardiovascular benefit uh, simply. So evolving decision-making process for selecting drug therapy in type 2 diabetes will remain uh, determined by cardiovascular benefit to support the emerging paradigm shift for earlier use of initial combination therapy. And, and that combination therapy uh, is uh, there in type 2 diabetes for cardiocentric approach. And it is must, and we don't have any other choice uh, if we don't think about uh, cardiocentric approach. So what Canadian guidelines suggest that uh, definitely priority should be clinical cardiovascular disease and, and uh, which antihyperglycemic agents has the benefit of cardiovascular uh, outcome trials and those drugs should be uh, preferred. So GLP-1 receptor agonist and uh, SGLT2 inhibitors are uh, two players uh, uh, have come up in uh, uh, after 2015 and 16.
So what after metformin? Definitely SGLT2 inhibitors I'm talking about. And uh, we all are using more and more SGLT2 inhibitors. We have just two contenders, SGLT2 and GLP-1 receptor agonist. In most of the cases, I would not say that 100% patients can use this only two drugs, but most of our 80% of the patients can be started with SGLT2 or GLP-1 receptor agonist or DPP-4 inhibitor. Why SGLT2? Because they reduce blood pressure, arterial stiffness, they reduce albuminuria, uric acid, they also uh, reduce glucose and uh, uh, glucose level as well as uh, they reduce insulin resistance and reduce uh, oxidative stress along with re uh, reduction in weight, visceral adiposity and sympathetic nervous system activity. Though they increase LDL or uh, LDL cholesterol in a uh, little uh, way, so ADA and ESD simply, this algorithm shows that if you have ASCVD predominantly, then you should start with GLP-1 or SGLT-2 with proven cardiovascular benefit. Even sometimes if, if uh, it is not viable to use uh, metformin, you can st uh, straight away give uh, any of this drug or even sometimes if hb one c is on higher side, you, you can use it in combination with this true molecule along with metformin as well. So if further intensification needed or patient cannot tolerate uh, current treatment, add agent from class not initially chosen and DPP-4 if not on GLP-1 receptor agonist. For Heart failure patient, definitely predominantly we should use SGLT2 inhibitors as we have uh, evidence for uh, this drug to be used in heart failure patients. So if HbA1c about target, avoid TZD and add an agent from class not initially chosen like GLP-1 or SGLT2, DPP-4 inhibitors, uh, only saxagliptin cannot be used, otherwise you can use it. So management of type 2 diabetes is not only about efficacy and lowering HbA1c, but it is also about uh, safety like hypoglycemia and improvement in cardiovascular health overall. So trials with CVD prevention uh, show that GLP-1 receptor agonist trials like LEADER and duration of semaglutide, they have shown a uh, significant benefit in cardiovascular health. Uh, for SGLT2 inhibitors, we have seen Empareg, Canvas, and declared TIMI trial. Those all trials have shown either benefit or neutrality in cardiovascular uh, uh, outcome trials. So again, this is the guideline where uh, uh, ADA ESD uh, consensus guideline says that first line is metformin plus lifestyle changes. And if ASCVD or CKD is there or heart failure is there, then you can uh, select from GLP-1 receptor agonist or SGLT2 inhibitor after metformin or without sometimes metformin. And, and uh, if you have CKD or heart failure, then definitely you should use SGLT2 inhibitor. So the crux of the guidelines that's, uh, that is suggested, it is all about after metformin, SGLT2 or GLP-1 receptor agonist. But the problem with GLP-1 receptor agonist, we all know there are multiple problems. As a GLP-1 receptor agonist, mostly, most of the drugs are injectable form. They are very expensive drug. Uh, and uh, the, the compliance with the drug is not good because of maybe sometimes expense or it, they, the drugs which are not uh, clearly well tolerated uh, in most of the cases. So Indian patients always definitely prefer oral option as well. Though we have oral semaglutide, but uh, for weight reduction or cardiovascular benefit, we don't have that good data. Though oral uh, drug in India working very well, but our 30%, more than 30% of the patients are, are not getting good response of weight reduction. And, and uh, oral semaglutide had not shown significant benefit in cardiovascular outcome trials. So SCLT2 inhibitors has evidence whether it is, uh, whether it is, uh, M whether it is, Empareg outcome, uh, can, uh, Canvas trial, or uh, any other trial, this all, uh, all declared to me, though declared to me had shown non-inferiority uh, in comparison to uh, other molecules or placebo, but Empareg outcome and Canvas trial had shown significant benefit in cardiovascular 
uh, out some trials. So in 2008, the FDA required assessment of cardiovascular safety for all antihyperglycemic drugs. More than 40,000 patients in SGLT2 inhibitors were put on RCTs up, uh, up till this date. So in a uh, randomized control trial for uh, re renal outcome has shown significant benefit for SGLT2 inhibitors, even in non-diabetic patient as well. This is why they are the preferred choice for CKD patient as well. SGLT2 inhibitors are cardiorenal risk-reducing agents that have glucose lowering as side effect. This is what stated by George Beckeris, but I'm, I'm not totally agreed to this. I can't call it side effect as I'm a diabetologist, but in, in some of the patient, yes, uh, uh, it is not helpful always that uh, reducing uh, blood glucose alone. So SGLT2 inhibitors and HFREF, uh, when we see all uh, DAPA, HF, and Emperor reduced trial, uh, heart uh, hospitalization due to heart failure is reduced in both uh, both uh, the trials, uh, even uh, in non-diabetic patients as well. So ESC 2021 guidelines for uh, for uh, patients with HFREF has shown that DAPA gliflozin and EMPA gliflozin can be recommended as first line therapy in patients with HFREF. Also, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, they have uh, no increased uh, risk of weight gain, hypoglycemia, and uh, uh, they have cardiovascular benefit. Uh, it, the reduction in pill burden is also possible as we have combination of metformin, uh, SGLT2, and metformin uh, sorry, SGLT2 and DPP4. And now we have available triple drug combination, our Indian uh, uh, Indian version of dapa gliflozin and Cetagliptin uh, along with metformin. So triple drug combination is available and that is uh, recommended by different guidelines that you can use it in combination by ADA, ESD, ESC or AS. So best of uh, the offering uh, leaving no stone unturned is SDLT2, and this combination can be used anywhere along with the continuum of the disease. Strong cardiovascular safety data with all clinical trials of uh, SDLT2 inhibitors. It, it provides uh, 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 quite a significant HbA1c reduction of around 1%, percent, one even sometimes 1.5% of HbA1c reduction in, uh, in the patient with a higher HbA1c. This multifaceted approach has potential to dealing the neutral progressive disease course of this disease. In patients with baseline BMI of 30 to 32, uh, have, uh, adding SGLT2 inhibitor to metformin is associated with weight loss approximately uh, 3 kilograms. So a paradigm shift in an SGLT2 uh, because we just don't have to think of a patient with diabetes and their e efficacy of the drug, but the drug which lowers the risk of cardiovascular event as well as renal event, and, and those drugs are definitely more preferred. So the preference given to anti-hyperglycemic agent that reduce cardiovascular or uh, heart failure and CKD progression risk. Uh, so the ADA has uh, recommended SGLT2 uh, after metformin strongly. So multidisciplinary uh, approach uh, to appropriate use of SGLT2 is uh, important. An integrated and coordinated approach to treatment of diabetic kidney disease in type 2 diabetes is needed. Unfortunately, type 2 diabetes, CKD and cardiovascular uh, diseases are often managed in uh, uh, COs. So card uh, cardiologists and nephrologists uh, need to take uh, on an active role in diabetes management as well, along with diabetologists. So with this, I'd like to be thankful to you, everyone, for patient listening.